Good morning, my friends. So today I'm going to finish chapter 10. So let's just do a little recap. Remember the girls and the boys got to the Whitman mission. Um, the girls were given a bath and put into some clean clothes. Uh, remember Louise was not being obedient and kissing their new ma on the cheek and she was trying to discipline her and um, Dr. Whitman came in and swept her up and said, oh, she'll, she'll get it. And <clears throat> Mrs. Whitman said, you're ruining my discipline. Um, but the boys are sleeping outside um, in the mansion house. All right. So I'm just going to start here. And then I know that I'll repeat just a little bit, but we'll get back into it. Give them time, mother. He tweaked the, a loose curl of, on the back of her neck. I asked the men to come in for a little private talk after supper. Behind him came Uncle Billy Shaw, Dr. Dagen, and the two boys. Louise gave a glad cry and threw herself into John's arms. Mrs. Whitman was still looking a bit miffed and asked briskly, Marianne, you and Elizabeth may set the table. Catherine, do you know how to knit? Yes, ma'am. Here is a stocking I began last night. You may take it for your work. We waste no time. Even if you cannot walk well, you can keep busy. Sit right here by the light. She moved swiftly around the stove, opening the oven, lifting lids and moving kettles. Delicious smells floated through the kitchen. Catherine was so hungry that she could hardly keep from snatching a slice of the beautiful brown bread her new mother set on the table. She knew from the expression on the faces of her brothers as they held the small sisters that they, too, were very hungry. A boy John's size came in, and Mrs. Whitman introduced him as Perrin Whitman, the doctor's nephew. Tagging after him was a small boy about four years old, Catherine guessed. This little tadpole is David Mollen, Perrin poked playfully at the boy, who was obviously his devout slave. Aunt Narcissa found him a hole in a hole in the woods. Now, Perrin, don't tease him. Mrs. Whitman smiled and patted the big boy on the shoulder. His hands were dirty. Take him outside to the wash bench. When they had gone, she explained, his mother could not keep him and his grandmother brought him here. His name is really Cortez, but we call him David Mollen for a friend of ours back east. He is a dear little fellow. When supper was ready, she called everyone to the table, and after the doctor had asked the blessing, he got up to serve the food on each plate. There was baked pork, baked potatoes, mashed turnips, sweet yellow pumpkin that tasted like squash, and great slices of bread Catherine had been longing for, butter too, too to spread on them. Again, the doctor gave the children only small portions, Seeing the disappointment in their faces, he said kindly, you must give your stomachs time to stretch. If you ate as much as you want, you would all be sick. Then he added with a smile, new pupils for your school, mother. School? asked Captain Shaw. Certainly. In fact, we have two schools, one for Indian children, the other for ours and those who are in, and those of the immigrant immigrant families who stay here throughout the winter. We always have a few of them. Who teaches? Mrs. Whitman broke in. The doctor and I teach the Indians when they, when any of them are here. They are gone much of the time to hunt deer, to fish for salmon in the Columbia River, or to work in the canvas fields. We may have five pupils or 60. You never know. We are employed, we are employing a teacher for the immigrant school, a Mr. Hinman. He came in with an earlier part of your wagon train, Captain Shaw. He seems to be a fine young man and will do well, we think. Catherine's spirit rose at the thought of a real school teacher, just what Mama had hoped they would find in the West. 
After supper, Dr. Whitman led the captain and Dr. Dagen back to the inner room the children had not yet seen. The door stood open so their voices came through clearly to Catherine as she sat near a lighted candle with her knitting. Mrs. Whitman, Mary Ann, and Elizabeth began clearing the table and washing the dishes. They seemed to pay no attention to the voices from the other room. But I am supposed to be a missionary to the Indians, not to take care of white people. How can I... You help the immigrants. Seems to me a missionary should look after everyone in need, no matter what color of his skin, Captain Shaw retorted. I don't know whether the American boards will allow... Those are good boys. They will be a big help to you, Dr. Dagen declared. Next spring, I'll come back and... Captain Shaw said, perhaps the L's and Walkers might. Who are they? Captain Shaw sounded almost angry. I'm not going to let just anyone have those boys. Dr. Whitman broke in. The Reverend Crushing L's and the Reverend Elika Walker are missionaries sent out by the American board two years after we came. They opened a mission among the Spokane Indians north of here, a place called Tush... Tushmushkin, an Indian word meaning Valley of the Springs. Our place is called Wallapu, which means place of rye grass. So that's the stuff growing around here. But how about this American board? Is that your boss? Dr. Whitman laughed. I suppose you might call it that. It is an organization of the Presbyterian and Congressional Churches for sending missionaries to various parts of the world. Do they pay you? We receive no pay, Captain Shaw. We are giving our lives in the service to which God has called us. The board allows us a small drawing account at the Hudson Bay Post in Vancouver, but we are supposed to make this mission self-supporting. That is why we have to charge the, for the supplies the immigrants need. Some of them complain to having to pay, we should like to give the supplies for free, and we never refuse a man in need if he cannot pay, but we have to charge enough to buy more seed, farming implements, help, and so on. We take nothing for ourselves but food and clothing. Catherine had listened intently and saw her brothers, too, were listening. They heard Uncle Billy say, I'll see you in the morning. Do think seriously about taking the boys. He and Dr. Dagen came through the kitchen, the boys following them out after John assured the sobbing Louise that he would see her in the morning. Time for prayers, Mrs. Whitman announced as she set the last clean dish on the shelf and they all joined the doctor in the sitting room. He opened his big Bible and began to read. This was Catherine's first look at this room. She noticed that it was even larger than the kitchen a big bed and several couches that could be used for beds lined the walls. A heated stove stood in the middle of the room, but there was no fire in it, and the room seemed chilly after the warm kitchen. Catherine, you are not paying attention, Mrs. Whitman said. Catherine felt a hot blush flow from, to her cheeks. She tried to keep her mind on what the doctor was reading. Then everyone knelt while he prayed. Time for bed, Mrs. Whitman said as she rose from her knees. A staircase led up from the sitting room to a big open loft or attic where straw stuffed pallets made up with striped gingham sheets lay on the floor. Each bed had a clean blanket and a clean nightgown folded on top. Marianne, Helen, and David went to bunks built against the wall. I'll build bunks for you girls as soon as I have time, Dr. Whitman promised. He, he examined Catherine's weak leg. Whoever set this did a fine piece of work, straight as the other one. Papa said it. Was he a doctor? Not a real one, I guess, but he liked to take care of sick people. Your leg will be all right in time. The muscles have become weak from lying still for so long. The two smallest girls were asleep before the doctor and his wife went downstairs. 
Maybe it won't be so bad living here, Elizabeth whispered as she snuggled into her blanket. Such good things to eat. Mrs. Whitman is awfully pretty, isn't she? She is the prettiest woman I ever saw, Catherine said. If only they will keep... She was asleep before she finished the sentence. All right, my friends, that is chapter 10, the rest of it. And I will now make a video um, for the chapter 10 worksheet. Um, see if you can do the chapter 10 worksheet without any help. If um, you can't or you're not sure of some of the answers, watch the video and I'll give them to you. Bye, my friends.